Um, right. It's based on um, somebody called Pripus, who apparently was the god of fertility. And the idea that somehow you kind of touched <laughs> part of the cake and a saffron custard will come out. Mish needs to understand how my ejaculation will work. Now you Look can now that. see it's yeah, kind of... Yeah, it's steaming. It's like Mount Vesuvius. <laughs> Are they not allowed to see what's kind of going on inside? Ideally. Right, I'm with you. And just okay. to make the challenge even more complex, we want to try and get it so by the time they've finished eating the cake... They don't know how it's done. Yeah, there's nothing there. All right. Fortunately, Mish is a woman of the world and is adopting a no-nonsense practical approach. I need a cake solid enough to prevent leakage. What I've done is try to produce you some cakes that have got a slightly denser texture, right, OK? Because okay. I feel that if you're going to put anything inside, then if you've got a more solid wall structure, it's more likely to come out of the top. <clears throat> so this one is the lemon cake, so it's got quite an, uh, an open texture. This cake has a light crumb structure. To melt the dry ice and produce the gas, I'm adding my saffron custard followed by a sweet syrup. It's coming up. I can't see. Oh, there's a couple of the holes there that where it's coming out the side. <clears throat> I think we've got a, we've got a bit got of a bit seepage. Bit of a... <laughs> I, don't think you're, I don't think you're God or whatever would we'll be too happy about the seepage. No. We're going to go for a denser texture cake. Yes. Here we go. With the carrot cake, it's the sunflower oil base as opposed to butter base. Nothing's come through. Nothing's come through, but similarly, nothing's come out over. The first two cakes aren't good enough. Now we're going for it with a heavyweight chocolate number. You can see already it's, it's dense. Mish has an idea to force the custard upwards. Just sealed that with buttercream on the outside. Literally, like building a brick wall. Brick, plaster. So now she's going to wrap this with a white chocolate collar. Now that's interesting. I can see custard. Well, that's certainly bubbling away. I think the chocolate cake has certainly been the one that's most um, supportive of that effect, you know, where it's come up and stayed quite intact on its structure. Yeah, it's either got to be something more dense or something with a layer of fat mm. uh, to act as a barrier, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. I've taken inspiration from my cake consultation and I'm using a dense white chocolate mousse. I've also constructed an ingenious little device to contain the eruption. So here's how we've solved the massive problem of the ejaculating cake. And the key to it is this. It's a chocolate chamber. So it's sealed on all sides apart from here. It also had to be edible. We didn't want the guest to eat the cake and end up with a kind of piece of plastic in the centre. I'm leaving nothing to chance. As extra protection against seepage, I'm using a paint gun to give an outer layer of chocolate to my dessert. It's to give a, a really nice textured finish. Also, it'll have a slight crunch to it. I've also added a surprise orgasmic sensation into the cake. So this is a biscuit base and it creates a sensation of things almost exploding in the mouth. So we've filled it with popping candy. Pop rocks, space dust, and then there'll be these sort of crackles going off in the back of your head. Finally, I'm using syrup and egg white to erupt with the dry ice. And then they get given a jug. Place on the table, the guest pours some of that into the cavity, hits the dry ice, causes the eruption, and there we are, my version of a fully-fledged Roman ejaculating cake.